Good evening, First GU friends and family. It's a new season. It's a new day. Join us on Wednesdays as we connect with Christ and our youth for Bible study story time and other activities as we navigate through life with Christ. Ready, set, let's go. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. saints of Almighty God, don't you know one of the wisest decisions you and I can ever make in our lifetime is to decide to follow Jesus as Lord and Savior of our lives? In today's Bible study lessons, we're going to learn about God and friendship. But what does the word friendship truly mean? The word friendship is a noun, which means a relationship between two people who hold mutual affection for each other, friendly disposition or feeling for another, the bond of friends. So in today's Bible story, let's look at a friendship between Jonathan and David. Amen. Jonathan and David were best friends. It didn't matter to Jonathan that one day David would be king over Israel and take the place of his own father, King Saul. Jonathan would always do what was best for his friend because he loved David and he knew that God was with him. King Saul, on the other hand, was so jealous of David that he wanted to kill him. David feared for his life. He asked Jonathan, Why is your father trying to kill me, and what have I done to make him so angry? Jonathan was surprised by David's question. How do you know my father wants to kill you? He promised me he was not mad at you anymore and would never hurt you. But David was convinced that Saul hated him. So the two of them came up with a plan that would prove whether or not David was in real trouble with King Saul. 
When they were done discussing the plan, David hid and Jonathan returned home to his father. And so the plan moved forward. David did not show up for an important dinner with the king and his family, even though everyone expected to see him. If the king asked why David was not at the dinner, Jonathan was to tell the king that he was attending the feast with his own family. The hope was to find out whether Saul would be angry with David or not. As the dinner went on, the king could not help but notice that David was not sitting in his place at the table. He asked Jonathan, Where is David, and why is he not here? Jonathan wasn't even finished explaining when the king became very angry. He was so filled with hate that he picked up his spear and hurled it at his own son. Jonathan knew without a doubt that David was in real danger. David, still hiding, waited for the signal that would tell him whether or not it was safe for him to come out. Jonathan would shoot three arrows close to the target if David was safe, but he would shoot them past the target if he was still in danger. Jonathan shot the arrows far into the distance. David now knew the truth. Saul wanted to murder him. As soon as he was sure he would not be seen by anyone else, David came out from where he was hiding and he fell on his face to the ground before Jonathan, filled with love and thankfulness for what his friend had done for him. The two friends held each other and cried over Saul's actions. The king had not only rejected David, but wanted him killed. Now the two friends and their two families would be separated forever. David cried even more than Jonathan. So Jonathan truly loved David as his own soul. He knew that God was with David and that he would be king over Israel. Not only had Jonathan protected David with his own life, but he continued to stand by David to the very end. The last recorded words of Jonathan to his beloved friend were, Do not fear my father, for you are destined to be king, and I will be second to you. Even my father knows this. Saints of Almighty God, when you think about the friendship between Jonathan and David, it was true. But even more so, it was true with Almighty God. You see, saints, with God, friendship is a little more smile, a little less frown, a little more we, a little less I, a little more laugh, a little less cry. With God, friendship is simply you and I. Amen. What does the Bible say about friendship? Relationships with people are often complicated and unpredictable, solid and stable one day, and chaotic and frustrating the next. You may find that the stories you know from the Bible don't really seem to apply to your day-to-day -day relationships. Sure, there are people in the Bible who are friends or who have friends, but is there any real advice for you? Fortunately, yeah, the Bible actually has a lot to say about friendship. Some people may try to go it alone or say, I don't need anybody. But in Ecclesiastes 4, we learn about the tragedy of not depending on other people, of not having friends. Scripture shows us that people with companions have someone who can lift them up when they fall, and that teams of multiple people are harder to defeat than just a lone person. The Bible tells us that friendship is a part of what makes life worth living. This echoes an earlier thought from the book of Genesis, that it is not good for a person to be alone. The Bible encourages us to pursue relationships for our own good. The Bible also recognizes that friendship can be complicated or disappointing sometimes. Many will say they are loyal friends, but who can find one who is truly reliable? Since there are no perfect people to be friends with, even the best advice in the world doesn't guarantee a perfect friendship. In the Bible, there are general guidelines that point you in the right direction in your relationships with others, 
but we ultimately have to face the challenges and frustrations that inevitably come with friendship. In a way, those challenges are what friendships are for. As Proverbs puts it in Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. Growing alongside other people makes us stronger, better people. Here are some helpful observations from the book of Proverbs when it comes to friendship. These will help you evaluate how you're doing in your friendships or if there are areas you need to grow. On choosing friends, Proverbs 13, 20. Walk with the wise and become wise. Associate with fools and get in trouble. Proverbs 22, 24 through 25. Don't befriend angry people or associate with hot-tempered people, or you will learn to be like them and endanger your soul. Proverbs 18, 1. Unfriendly people care only about themselves. They lash out at common sense. Proverbs 12, 26. The godly give good advice to their friends. The wicked lead them astray. On gossip and arguments. Proverbs 20, 19. The gossip goes around telling secrets, so don't hang around with chatterers. Proverbs 18.21 The tongue can bring death or life. Those who love to talk will reap the consequences. Proverbs 18.13 Spouting off before listening to the facts is both shameful and foolish. Proverbs 18.19 An offended friend is harder to win back than a fortified city. Arguments separate friends like a gate locked with bars. On loyalty and fake friends. Proverbs 18:24. There are friends who destroy each other, but a real friend sticks closer than a brother. Proverbs 19:4. Wealth makes many friends. Poverty drives them all away. Proverbs 19:22. Loyalty makes a person attractive. It is better to be poor than dishonest. Proverbs 19:6. Many seek favors from a ruler. Everyone is the friend of a person who gives gifts. Proverbs 17:17. 17, 17. A friend is always loyal, and a brother is born to help in time of need. It seems that friendship has always been complicated and troubled, even back in ancient times. God himself, in Jesus, faced the harsh truth that humanity can be disloyal, terrible friends, and yet he still chooses to call us friends and to love us. God's love as we see it in Jesus is the best demonstration of true friendship. Look to God's wisdom and you will learn how to be a friend worth having. Wow, saints, the Bible has a lot of good stuff to talk about when it comes to friendship. That's because our God is a great God. But let's let Jack and Scarlett tell you so. Amen. Isaiah 40, 11. Like a good shepherd, he takes care of his people. He gathers them like lambs in his arms. Ah. God cares for us so much he doesn't want to be far away from us. Instead, he snuggles us close like fluffy little sheep. Isaiah 45, 12. I am the one who made the earth and created people to live on it. With my hands, I stretched out the heavens. Just like I used my hands to make really cool castles with building blocks. God used his hands to make the earth and sky and even us. In John 10, 28, Jesus says, I give my sheep eternal life. They will never die, and no one can take them out of my hand. Not even the strongest muscle man or a huge giant could steal us from God's hand. God is still stronger. Psalm 31, 15. My future is in your hands. That means that God doesn't only take care of us today, but he also takes care of us tomorrow, and the next day, and the next, and the next, and forever, into infinity. Psalm 119, verse 73. With your hands you made me and helped me become who I am. That's right, God made the fastest cheetahs, the biggest mountains, and the brightest stars. God is really good at making things. His hands made all the cool stuff in the world and used those same hands to make us just the way we are. 
Psalm 139, verse 7. If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. That means if I go way into outer space like an astronaut, or deep into the bottom of the ocean like a deep sea diver, I'm never out of God's reach. He's always there protecting me. Thank you for joining us on our journey with Jesus. Tune in next Wednesday as we connect with Christ. Bye-bye. Will you decide now to follow Jesus?